Why do we still not have flying cars? It's so frustrating. It's like with these robot demos. Looks great. Where can I buy one? Unfortunately, reality is far behind the flashing demos. The future, so we've been made to believe, is that of EVTOLs, which are electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. They've also become known under the name air taxis, but for me, they'll remain flying cars. They are drones, basically, but big enough to carry people. Flying cars could be a blessing for cities that are suffocating in traffic but have no space to build more roads. They could replace short-haul flights and save kerosene. They could become airborne ambulances or carry time-sensitive cargo. They could open entirely new opportunities to prematurely die. And that brings us to the problems. Our taxi startups have been around for about 15 years and many of them have gone out of business already. It's not that these things don't fly. We've seen many demonstrations of prototypes. It's just that making them commercially competitive takes a lot of investment, much more than anyone anticipated. And startups are just running out of money before getting anywhere. The most recent victim of a funding shortage is the German company Lilium. It was founded in 2015. In 2022, they presented a nice prototype that took off and landed flawlessly. They had about 1,000 employees, 700 plus pre-orders and more than $1.5 billion in investments. It wasn't enough. Last week, the company announced its insolvency. Stocks of the publicly traded company sharply dropped afterwards. The UK company Vertical Aerospace, which works on a similar product, ran into the same problem earlier this year. They were narrowly saved by a $50 million private investment of their CEO. Another German company, Volocopter, raised more than 500 million euros, but a few months ago, its CEO raised insolvency concerns after the German government didn't want to give them a 100 million euro loan. They aren't the first to run into trouble. Kitty Hawk, founded in 2010 and backed, among others, by Google co-founder Larry Page, with a total of more than $400 million, closed down in 2022. Zunomero, one of the first companies to enter the business, laid off people in 2019 and not much have been heard of them since. Why is that happening? The trouble is that the world has been built around fossil fuels. Any company aspiring to commercialize electrically powered flying machines needs to have enough breath to build the entire production line, from batteries to docking stations, along with it. Currently existing batteries are too heavy to allow for long distance flights, which limits applications. On top of that come regulation worries. You don't want taxis to fall down on people and no one really knows how the regulations will look like. This somewhat understandably spooks investors, though maybe all we need is a new complaints department. But as they say, there are only three things you can count on in life death, taxes and startups running out of money, so it's not like this is unexpected. One also expects, I'm afraid to say, that they falter first in Europe. This is because the US and Chinese governments have been putting much more money behind the idea. Their startups are better funded and will last longer. Whether that's a good thing and will eventually lead to success or whether it just means that the US and China will sink more money into a business that isn't ready to fly is another question. Seeing that the biggest problem with air taxis is that they're electric might make you wonder why not just use combustion engines. Leaving aside that they're inefficient and we're supposed to stop using them, the issue is that they're too noisy. You don't really want lawn mowers to hover over your house, do you? One way to fix the battery issue would be to use hydrogen. This is, for example, what the Boston-based firm Ala Kai is working on. The name is Hawaiian and means to lead or to guide. They have a prototype that they say can fly up to four hours at more than 100 miles per hour and carry more than 1,000 pounds. This all sounds very good. But in the end, the question of whether that makes commercial sense will come down to the question of where the hydrogen comes from. Again, investors might be wary. When it comes to steady financial support, I suspect that 
Chinese companies will have an edge. The Chinese government has flying cars in their five-year plan and they're prepared to pour a stunning $44 billion into what they call the low-altitude economy by 2026. It might mean that China will lead the way into the future or that China will lead itself into the past. We shall see. For the moment, I'm jealous of the Chinese because I think this is a very sad development. I understand the economic problem. I understand that investors and governments don't want to throw good money after bad. And I'm glad I didn't buy Lilium stocks. But I also think that flying vehicles are the future and I want the future to be here now. Or maybe we should just accept that the Jetsons were a particularly cruel joke. I love talking about science, not just because it's interesting, but also because it's inspiring. That's why I'm always looking for new science stories. My favorite starting place is Nautilus magazine. And if you're also looking for information and inspiration, you should really have a look. Nautilus is a science magazine that keeps you up to date on the most relevant topics that are being discussed today. They frequently have scientists writing for them who will tell you the inside stories. Nautilus comes with a digital and a print version and you'll notice immediately that it's a high quality production. I can tell you from my own experience with them that their editors are really working hard to make the writing sparkle and the illustrations are really artworks. I've written several contributions for Nautilus myself, mostly about physics, black holes, quantum gravity and quantum mechanics. But I enjoy this magazine because it tells me what's going on in other areas. What I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. They'll pick the most relevant topics and give you all the context. Good writing is a craft and Nautilus really really keeps the standard high. If you want to be well informed and also inspired, you should really check them out. If you go there, make sure to use my link joinnautilus.com slash Sabine because that'll get you 15% off the annual subscription. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.